I know Atleti were defensively again a bit of a shambles. Yeah. But we were talking in the studio here, and Kay mentioned it actually it, about Barcelona. It felt different today during that game. It had energy. The football was good. It, it just felt that the the whole place was revitalised. Did it did it come across that way? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. That is the fundamental thing that I'm left with from this game. Now, obviously, look, you can be conditioned a little bit by the reaction of the fans. You can allow yourself to be kind of carried along with it too much. But I think the thing that, that really struck me throughout this game was the most basic thing of all, Craig. It was fun. It was fun in a way that it hasn't been here for a long time. It, it was enjoyable. Now, look, this doesn't mean that next week they're going to play well. They might go next week and be absolutely awful again. But tonight, at least, this was a lot of fun. There was a real sense of Wow, there's something here. Now, it may not be enough, but look at this in statistical terms. It's put them back in a Champions League place. Look at this in terms of kind of, if you like, the sensations, the feelings, the, the emotions. And there is a sense here, I think, throughout this ground of, hey, this is good, isn't it? We can enjoy this. And, and I think you're right. In the ground, at least, that definitely came across. The fact that it was quicker, the ball was moving better. They were defensively vulnerable, yes, but they played. And they played in a way that, that it felt like, yeah, this could well be a Xavi and Andef team. So just one more, just a quick thing here. <laughs> how many surprises and what was the big surprise about how a poor Atleti were in this game? Um, it's difficult to put my thing, finger on one. I suppose you could look at it, but you see a lot of these things that I'm going to say now have actually been happening all season. So you look at, look at it in the fact that Barcelona had scored from their first two shots on target, that Black isn't saving things anymore. And that is a surprise only it's been happening all season. And I don't want to focus on Oblak because it's not about him and it's not fair. That moment when Oblak and Carrasco between them almost gifted Barcelona a goal, what was it, 20, 25 minutes into the game, that was a real sense of there's an uncertainty here. How long it seemed to take to realise that Mario Hermoso was completely isolated with Adama Traore and Alves going for him. And, and it felt like, well, it felt like they were slow to react to that, although it is true that Carrasco went over to that wing to try and give him some protection. So that surprised. I suppose the inability to get hold of the ball at all in the middle of the pitch with, with, with Koke, and, and he's the one that should be doing that. So these are all things that went wrong, but I'm not sure how many of them really count as a surprise. And then you can go to a name that you've already mentioned, Jao Felix. In terms of talent, this is a great player but it hasn't always happened. Now, he had that lovely little effort that, that curled just past the post, and he scuffed a really good opportunity on the volley. But again, it didn't really happen. And bear in mind, this is in the context of Diego Simeone, asked about Jao Felix yesterday, gave basically a one-sentence answer. It's time for the words to be facts. And of course, the facts tonight are they've been beaten again. And, and, and I just wonder if, if, if Simeone was partly testing Jao Felix tonight and may now feel, well, I've got to put Anjo Correa on, who's been the best player in Spain in January and only came on as a sub. Yeah, Diego Simeone. So I've suddenly got to go back to the drawing board, although you do wonder, and I'm sure there'll be many questions asked of it. We were wondering as well if, um, if it would be a turning point with what we saw in that but, Valencia Well, the game. thing is with Simeone, he's got so much support, it seems, uh, uh, with the Atletico Madrid fans, because if you remember back to the Valencia game, at uh, 2-0 down in the, the home stadium. There were no cries, boos or hisses towards the manager. There's full belief that he can turn that around and make the right decisions. And, and on that day, guess what? He did. But I thought today he made some poor decisions in his selection and his tactics. And to go back, Sid was talking about Joe Felix. You just something think, you know, right fit, wrong place, right time, wrong place, all that kind of thing. It, it, I get the feeling the two things are not gelling. That team with him consistently, this coach with him consistently. Because there's no doubt he's a heck of a talented young man, but his career's going that way at the moment. And that's going to be one that he's going to have to figure out. And Atletico Madrid are going to have to figure out because they outlaid a lot of money on him. They're unlikely to get that money back uh, because of his form uh, and the, the amount of times he spends on the bench. And I just looking at it from the outside, I feel that he's probably going to have to go and kickstart his career somewhere else because the two at the moment, uh, Atletico Madrid and Diego Simeone, are not a good fit. For Joe Felix. And the problem is, I suppose, at the moment, Sid, is that 
you know, usually you're thinking, OK, it might not be your season, but you will finish in the top four. And even though it didn't go Sevilla's way yesterday, Atleti are contending with the likes of a Sevilla and a Betis this season too. There is a competition to finish in these top four spots. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we were talking about this, weren't we, a little bit pre-game, but, but this was a game that used to decide the title. This year it was being presented as a game that might decide the Champions League places. And while, of course, it's exaggerated to say that, what are we, week 24, there's a very long way to go and there's a lot of points still, still to be won. And we could well get a scenario in which both of these two teams get a Champions League place at the end of the season. In fact, you would normally say that should happen. You would trust both of them to come good. But... You look at what's ahead of them now, and obviously Real Madrid have got a big lead over both of them. Sevilla have got a very big lead over both of them. And the third team is Betis. Now, under normal circumstances, you say, well, these two will catch Betis. Betis are playing some of the best football in Spain right now. They look absolutely rock solid. They've got a reasonably si reasonable sized lead over these two teams. And so right now, and of course this can change, you can't help but look at the table and think, it may well be only one place up for grabs between these two teams. This, today really was big. And, of course, the economic impact of one of these two teams not getting to the Champions League is huge as well. And so, yes, this is very, very big indeed for both of these clubs. And if, if Atletico weren't to make it into a Champions League place, then that will have consequences in terms of the kind of movements that they want to do in the summer and may well, to take it back to what we were talking about a moment ago, have direct consequences for a player like Jao Felix. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.